um, if you want to be a great designer, you need to understand the psychology of people uh, because it's people that will be using the product you want to design. You need to understand how people think, uh, why they think, how they think. You need to understand all of that. Another thing you need to know is um, as designers, uh, what we do, we are, we are influencers at the same time. We influence people. The designs you create is meant to lead people to click on a button, is meant to lead people to make an action. So as designers, you need to understand how your users think Sorry. so you can come up with the perfect product for them. And um, in order to influence people, like I said, we need to understand how they think, how they behave and all of that. And it, it will help you come up with the perfect product. Uh, I have an example here to start. Um, this is, I want this to be a little bit lively. Um, so I will be asking a few questions. So if you have an answer, you can chat or just, I think it's chat, chat will be perfect. So if you look at this, for example, this design I'm showing right here, um, as a first time user of this mobile phone, okay, I know all iPhone users know what this is, but then um, where would you want to click? Looking at this design, I want, I want your responses, please. Um, where would you, where are you likely to place your thumb if you see this screen up here? Okay, look at it closely. Um, so for iPhone users, um, they know where to press. <laughs> and it's definitely not the screen. It's definitely not the center of your screen. Uh, there's a home screen. So there's an information that says where you are supposed to press. But the design itself doesn't have that much information for you. So when you're doing your design, you need to know that you are not designing for yourself. Yeah, the designer felt like he has done a perfect job with this screen. But in the real sense, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's an error on the designer's side because somebody sees this, for example, back then there were these tech we had these techno phones that um the you can actually unlock your screen. By, by tapping right on the middle and all that. So when I see this phone now, for example, I'm like, ah, I'm on the screen, they see me, I tap with that and all that. Meanwhile, it's not, so the information is not properly communicated. Though the info is up there, but the design is misleading. Any user will see this and will feel like, ah, maybe let me tap on the screen because it's showing like a thumbprint, it's showing like what, when you go to do your BVN, when you go to do some of those things, you tap directly on the screen. So you won't even know that there's a small button at the bottom that they're directing you to tap on. So you need to understand how people think generally. People, people like, um, they like the usual. They like, okay, this is how it is done. Uh, when I go to a website, the search button is always at the top. Why is it on at the bottom? So there's a pattern to how people think. And there's a book titled 100 Things Every Designer Needs to Know About People. So if we're, if we're going to be talking about this psychology as a topic, honestly speaking, we're not close to this. So I decided to streamline it to um, a few principles that you should actually that would that you can that can be your guide um, while you're designing, uh, so you understand how people think and why they think how they think. So um, I always start my classes with this uh, quote that um, always put your users at the heart of your design. Um, for me, it's called <laughs> for everybody. It's called user experience. It's called user interface. It's not called personal interface, it's not called personal experience. So it's about your users. Your users are the king of your product. So whatever you're doing as a, as a designer, you know it is for somebody, it's for people. It's not for you. I designed um, an app, a dating app um, for teenagers one time. And um, to me, it looked good, it looked nice until an actual teenager um, tested the app. The person was like, ah, no, this is, this is too complicated. Uh, these fonts are too serious. It looks as if it's an adult app and all that. To me, I, I felt it was perfect. I felt it was good. But to the real user, to the real user, it was not good enough. So as a designer, so many times people will tell you, you have to adjust this, you have to. That's, how that's why research is very important in every design um, uh, process you're going through. So you have to make sure that people actually test your app. People need, you're not the only one using the app. There are other stakeholders. There are people that will be using their users that will be using it. So let them test it in real time and give you their feedback. So users are very important when you're doing that. So the first principle for today uh, is user-centered design. So uh, it's important that your design um, is centered around your user, like I said earlier. And um, a good user, a good UX design um, prioritizes the user's need and preferences. It ensures that the design aligns with their goals and expectations. So if you want to really um, do designs that are 
perfect for your users um, that would fit um, every user. You need to actually make sure you understand them and create those designs, uh, knowing who you're creating it for. If you're creating an app for people that are old, you can't make the fonts tiny. So you need to understand how, this one is even straightforward, it's not even psychology. You don't need to read really psychology to understand these things. If you're doing an app for children, you need to know that the font has to be playful, the colors have to be there. So it is for them, it's not for you. It's for them, it's not for you. So at the end of the day, I, I, I met a, a couple of designers that will tell you, yeah, I did, I did one mad design. And I'm like, okay, to you, it is a mad design, it's a cool design, but to the user, uh, would they find it interesting? Would they find it easy to use? The first time GTB redesigned their mobile, uh, sorry, last time, that's the most recent update they did on their app. Um, when I opened it, it was cool. It was nice. I saw a lot of flying icons, animations, and all that. I was like, this is nice. But then I wanted to transfer money, and it didn't just hook. So on a good day, sometimes we prioritize aesthetics over uh, usability, which is very wrong. It's not even how fine it is sometimes. It's how usable your product is. So you need to know that your users are enjoying and this will actually help them um, enjoy their goal. So let me quickly move to the next one, uh, which is mirroring. So mirroring is another thing that you would um, take into consideration as a designer when you're considering design psychology. Now, um, we, have, we have neurons in our brain uh, that are called mirroring neurons. And what they do is they help us act and feel according to what other people in front of us are doing. That is why when somebody is shouting at you, shouting back at them when somebody is pointing at you somehow you just see yourself pointing back at them you might it's, it's not something you plan to do it's called mirroring so same thing happens with your website so when you're showing people your website you are passing uh you, you're trying to exchange you're trying to pass you're trying to make them reflect what is showing on the website so for example if your website has a lot of for example crying children sad children you have pictures like that everywhere trust me whoever looks at that website will feel sad so this is saying you can actually transfer emotions through your design. You can transfer emotions through your design. So you, if you want to make people happy, you can mirror it. You can put it on your design and people would reflect it. People will feel that happiness. If you want to stay hunger, you want to make people feel hungry, you want to stay up their appetite, you can do it with your design. But what you show to people, people would, it's, it's just, it's natural. They will reflect, they will feel that thing, they will feel that energy. They will feel that energy. So it's it's just, I just realized that recently I realized that psychology in, in UX design is a lot similar to the one in agri because I studied agri science and um, a lot of these things are, are also there. They tell you how farmers do not want to take um, innovations, farmers prefer what they what they are used to, all those things. It's the same thing in UX, it's the same thing in design, same thing in graphic design. So whatever emotion you're trying to pass, whatever you're trying to make people feel, you can pass it through your design. So if you understand uh, what you're trying to do, you should be able to pass it through uh, your design as a designer. So I said here, by incorporating mirroring in design, we create a sense of familiarity and connection. We make users feel more comfortable and engaged with the product. So if you know how to use this well, you use it to your own advantage. You use it to a point where people will actually feel engaged. People will enjoy using your product. People enjoy using your product. So the next one quickly is color psychology. This one is, if we start talking about colors today, we're not going to close again. Um, color psychology is important. Uh, I said here that colors have the power to evoke emotions and influence user decision. Um, I, I, some of us, we can remember back then, secondary school, primary school days, when you tell somebody, don't write my name with, with red biro. Yeah. Even then, even as children, we, we knew what red stands for. We knew what these colors communicate. So psychology, you should know that people are, um, their decisions are, are, are influenced by colors sometimes. So for example, um, yellow is a color of happiness, a color of cheerfulness, color of spontaneity and hope. Uh, what I have here, I have a small wheel here that shows different colors, like a few colors, not all colors, and, and what they stand for. And um, I, there's another example I, I want to give us. So for example, imagine a hospital painted red, painted color red, that is an error. It's an error, I want you to think about it. Imagine a hospital or a health center painted in red color, it's an error. So that's the same thing some of us do when we do our web design, mobile app design. Your colors are not even communicating what you're trying to pass. 
you are designing um, um, something for a food industry and you are using black and white. Uh, so I worked with someone recently and um, their color is black and white and they are into Web3. And I was like, black and white, Web3, uh, Web3 colors are futuristic colors. We fought over this thing. We had lots of back and forth because I was looking at the psychology of the whole design. He was just looking at, ah, because he's an old man, actually. He was like, I like black and white. It's not what you like. It's what you're communicating. It's, your, it's what you like communicating to the, to, the, to the client. Is it communicating to your users? Because at the end of the day, it's for your user. It's not you. When you finish using design, is it you that would now be using it? Like people would definitely use design. So it's not about you as a designer. So if you're used to making this decision that ah, I think I like pink, let me just use pink. I think I like purple. Let me use purple. There's a lot to design. There's a lot. There's a psychology behind using colors too. So I, I, I have a website I usually go to to check some because you cannot cram all these things. There's some colors you want to use and you want to find out what they stand for. There's a website, www.empoweryourselfwithcolorpsychology.com. Empower yourself with colorpsychology.com. It looks very long, but the website is communicates about color. Tell you about red. Tells you about, for example, tells you about red. Tells you about the advantage and disadvantage of using color red. Tells you about the emotion that is passed when you use color red. That's one example. If you choose green, you tell you what is green. What does it communicate? What's the advantage? What will happen when people use green in their designs? Green communicates freshness, communicates nature. Somebody wanted to go into, um, I think it's a table water industry, whatever, and, and told me to do a design for them, like a logo back then. And I started using blue. And person was like, no, no, we want a, a touch of black. We want a touch of, I was like, no. Like, you need to be able to explain what, why you're doing what you do. Blue, we all know it. It communicates freshness, communicates water, communicates anything like hydro. So why, why use black? So you need to understand all these things. I, I learned um, sometimes last year that in China, white is uh, a color for bad luck. It's when people die, that's when they use white. And I was like, are you serious? Because over here, it means light, it means purity, it means innocence and all that. So you need to understand all these colors and how they work. Because uh, that in that way, you'll be able to pass the message correctly, you'll be able to actually um, get people's emotion because you're actually influencing their decisions with those colors. Influencing their decisions. So, for example, you have a, a website for children or an app for children, and you use black and white. Uh, it's not it's not there yet. The children will not spend up to ten seconds, twenty seconds on that website. But when you use their colors, when you use those colors that speak to them, they will spend time, and that's 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 the goal. We want people to stay. We want people to. We're influencing people to take decisions. So, if people don't spend ten seconds, twenty seconds. 30 seconds, one minute on your website, then something is wrong. It might be the colors, as simple as it looks. Your color might be the reason why people are not looking at you, why people are not checking your designs. And I tell people a lot of time, people that know me, I tell them that, see, a minimal design is just, is just the important, is the important part of it. Like, just keep it simple. Or make sure you communicate. You don't need to use all the colors in the world before your design is perfect. You don't need to use all the colors in the world before you design space. So the lesser the colors, um, the easier it is to communicate what you're trying to communicate. You're not, there's something I would love to show us, maybe at the end of the class, uh, because I'm showing just this screen. Um, I would love to show us some websites and um, we'll judge, let's just tear down, do a small tear down of those websites and see uh, what is wrong with it and um, what, what we can do better. So I will quickly go to the next one, <clears throat> which is cognitive load. Um, I said here that reducing cognitive load in design leads to smoother user experience. Okay, let me first explain what cognitive load is. <clears throat> cognitive load uh, is the amount of information our brains can process at any given time. So when you're doing your design, you need to know that um, what is not important, take it out or just put it somewhere, but not as the first thing. For example, you go to a website and the first thing you see is... Um, Maybe you are welcome to our website where it is, this, this, where that, 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 where this, this, this. It might not be what the user is looking for. The first thing you might even need to put is, we can make your health better. We can make you a millionaire. Do you understand? So your important information is what you should put. Like it should be the priority on your design because users will focus, they will only focus on, on the goals rather than the complexity of the interface. What they came to do is what they are looking for. 
like I said, the GTD mobile app I was talking about, the design looked good, it looked perfect. But I couldn't do what I wanted to do. So it's not about how beautiful it is. Yes, it's important that it's beautiful, but at the same time, can people actually achieve their goals when they come to your design, when they are using your design? So you need to think like a user. You need to ask yourself sometimes. Like when I when I design mobile apps or websites, I look at them again and again. I ask myself, okay, if I was a user, would I use my app? Um, if I was a 15-year-old, would this app be, would it be usable for me? Would I enjoy using it? If I was a five-year-old, do it's, it's hard to think like that. Would I be able to feel this thing? Would I be able to enjoy this? So I, I said, there's something else I said. I said people crave information, but they want information they can process. Yes, people are coming to look for them, but you need to give them what they can actually process as users. Whatever is not relevant, you need to take it out. I have a few examples I would share after now, and I'll show you an example of websites that have so many things that are not important, and we just waste people's time. Like you, you, are, you have not even gotten the main thing you're looking for on a website, on a mobile app. So if your designs are designs that in, in, in 10 seconds, people cannot see what they came to look for. In five seconds, they cannot achieve their goal, then something is wrong. So you need to reduce cognitive load, reduce the load, you are, reduce the stress you are giving people. There's a, and, and this goes to the UX writers sometimes, because as a UX designer, you're supposed to understand a little bit of UX writing as well. When you're writing some of these things, know that people will read them and people do not like to read. People do not like that stress. I read, if I want to read a book, I will buy a book and read. Or I'll come to your website and there's too many things to read. I'll use your mobile app and there's too many things to process. So it's important that you reduce the cognitive load when you're designing. That is how to make sure psychology works. The next thing is information architecture. Information architecture. Um, Effective information architecture organizes information. It makes it easy for people to find what they need. Um, I said something earlier. I said, um, sometimes when people come to your website, they are familiar with um, how a website should be. They know that, okay, if I'm looking for something, it will just be listed under something. If I'm looking for something, if I can't find it, I'll use a search button or a search um, whatever, a search field. So on a good day, if you're doing designs, you need to know that uh, people are coming to look for information and it has to be easy for them. It has to be easy for them. That's why I like I like the likes of uh, Webflow, the likes of um, okay. Let me even use WhatsApp for example. WhatsApp is an app that even if it's the first time you're using it, you will understand how to go about it. It is well arranged. You know what button leads to the next one. They will tell you to skip if you're not interested in skipping. So so it is well arranged. Another 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 site I lo I love is is Jumia for example. Jumia has it might look too crowded, but if you're looking for things under the category of electronics, it's there. If you're looking for gadgets, you will see the categories there. So they arrange it in such a way that you will not be seeing shoes in where they are clothes. You will not be seeing uh, gadgets where they are electronics, or where they are, I'm um, sorry, where they are maybe food and all that. So the things are well. So information architecture is also very important when it comes to design psychology. You need to understand that people are not trying to be stressed. If I come to your website and I'm finding it hard to do what I came to do, I won't spend time. There's an app um, my team and I were working on on a project recently and it was about churning. Like, why do people leave um, some websites? Why, why are people tired of some, some websites, some products and all that? And, and there was so many research done and we discovered that people just get out when they can't find what they are looking for on your website. They will not be looking for it. I, I, these days, data is very expensive, especially, especially if, you are, if you are using MTN data. It's very expensive. So imagine coming to your website and they are spending 20 seconds and they are still not seeing what they are looking for. There are other options. They will go. You can't keep people. People will go. So you need to arrange your information in such a way that people would have a seamless, a smooth experience. While they're... The next one very quickly is social validation. Now, um, it's important that um, people enjoy their visit to your site. People um, stay, like people need to stay. And uh, one of the ways we can do this, one of the ways we can actually make them trust us as a brand or as a product, whatever you're designing, one of the ways to make people trust you is this social validation. You need to put maybe, for example, logos of clients, how much you made last year, um, clientele. You need to put your, your feedback of your clients, like your testimonials and all that. All those things will actually influence uh, your users. It will give them confidence and trust in your product. Now, there was a, there was a brand I worked with one time and um, it was as if nobody was noticing them until we started posting reviews of clients. So that's why websites just put reviews like, okay, they will tell you, okay, uh, this client enjoyed our product. They will put some write-ups like, ah, this is the best service in Lagos. This is the best service in Nigeria. 
just so that you can validate that, okay, they are good people. There's another example I have. So Infinix as a mobile phone, I know a few people that use Infinix because the video is on the brand, is on the, the brand ambassador. So people need that validation. You need to be sure that, ah, are people using this product? How many people are using it? Is it a nice product? Some of us are using Apple product today because, yeah, people told us it's nice. Somebody told us somewhere that it's better than Android. I don't know how true that is, but. So people need validation. So you can actually present that on your website. When people come to your website, they need to be sure that other people have used it and they can trust you as well. That's psychology. People need to trust your brand. People need to trust what you do before they actually patronize you as a brand. So um, the next one I have, sorry, which is the final one, um, is cognitive bias. And uh, I think there's about um, 180 uh, bias. Yeah, 180 or so on this list. You can check Google, cognitive bias uh, project. And what this means is, um, why do people do what they do? How do people, why do people think the way they think? Uh, if you go through this, you will understand that people do not like to be stressed at all. Now, one of, one of the whatever I have here is, it says we are drawn to details that confirm our existing beliefs. That's natural for everybody. If a person tells you, say, ah, Omo, this government, KRCP, you will like that conversation because Omo, you can relate. You can relate. Another, another, another bias here is we notice flaws in others more easily than we notice flaws in ourselves. It's true. It's very true. So some of these things look like general cognitive bias, or you can apply them to design. You can help, it can help you know why people are not clicking on a button. Why people are not really seeing what they're supposed to. So I, I have a video I'd like to show before I um, I round up. Let me stop sharing and share again. Okay. It's confirmed you can see my screen, please. Yes, we can see us screen. All right, thank you. So, um, all right, there's something called the Monkey Business Illustration. It's called Gorilla Business Illustration, actually. And um, sorry, I, I thought I downloaded it. Okay, so um, this this is just a proof that people will focus on what they came to do. They are not distracted. So the prompt here is count how many times the players wearing white ball, uh, white, white pass the ball. So there will be players playing ball, just passing to each other. So I want us to do this test together. I want you to count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. How many times the players wearing white pass the ball? Uh, let's see how many people will get it correctly. All right, start here. Answer. Oh, sorry. All right. So, sorry. How many of us actually counted how many times they passed the ball? So I did, but I don't know. Maybe it's my screen here. I, I think I counted about eighteen passes. Okay, eighteen. Okay. Um, with with all the counting, did you notice that the background curtain was changing colors? Let's be honest. Did you notice that the background curtain was changing colors? Well, I wasn't paying attention, sir. Okay, so that's the idea. Did you notice that one of the black players left while the game was on? You probably didn't notice all. that. Yeah. So because you I were focused... seen it, okay, okay. So because you were focused on looking at the white guys passing the balls like the white guys on white, that was your concern. So the idea was to use the gorilla to distract you, but then a lot more other things were happening on the background that you probably didn't notice. That's how people work. People only notice what they came to do. They would so sometimes. The information you actually uh, put on your website that you think people will see, they might not even see it. That's why it's good you arrange these things based on priority. How do you want them to see it? It's important. People will miss information, and it's not their fault. Like I showed you the first example I showed us. Um, 
let me go back to my email. The first example I showed us, ordinarily you think uh, any wise person should be able to, should be able to solve this, it's not hard. It's just, it's, it's a mobile phone and it just shows where to press, but, so I confirm you can see my slides. Yes, you can see. All right. So if you look at this, for example, it looks like ah, you should know that is this tiny button you're supposed to press now, this one at the bottom. But looking at the design, it looks as if, okay, this is where you are telling me to press because it's shining. It's, it's, it's just shiny. It's, it's everywhere on my face. It's showing me that ah, press me, press me. So uh, let me go to the next uh, example I said I was going to show us, for example, uh, on how some websites are lacking in this psychology thing. All right. So you confirm you can see my screen, please. Yes, you can see. All right, thank you. All right, so this is um, is it Yale School of Art or Yale School of Art? This is their website, and trust me, there's a lot of important information on this website. But you can see how it is arranged. You can see how it looks. So no matter how good your information is, if you don't arrange it, where people will miss important things. People are just focusing, okay, I came to this place, I want to know about the school. I want to know what's happening. Is this even a school website? It doesn't even look like one. Another website I have, for example, is this um, car leasing website. Can you see this place? Sorry, confirm you can see my screen, please. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So for example, looking at this website, it looks like there's a lot of things happening. Happening, sorry. There's this, there's this icon moving. There's this guy moving. There's this arrow blinking. There's this. Everything is happening. There's this uh, uh, social media button bouncing here. A lot of things are happening on the same website. A lot of things are happening. The background is busy, and you're like, okay, I came here to look for a Toyota car. Where will I find Toyota? For example, you need to go all the way down to find Toyota, and nothing tells you that from the top. You just have to figure it out yourself. So Toyota is down here. So for example, if you want to, maybe you want a car list to you, you need to figure it out yourself. Nobody will teach you. So if your design is stressing people out, people are finding it hard to figure out what they came to do, then you need to work on yourself. You need to actually go and learn those 100 things I said. Design, design, designers need to know about people. Using by uh, Susan uh, Winchek or so. Uh, 100 things every designer needs to know about people. You need to know how people think so that when you do designs, it will be a perfect design that they will enjoy using. Uh, thank you very much. That is my time.